Hi, this is Polly from thefitmumformula.com and today I'm going to be talking about alternatives to bread if you're kind of trying to cut down on your bread intake. Now, first of all, why would you want to cut down your bread intake? Well, first of all, you might want to be cutting down on your gluten intake and that's kind of a separate issue because um, anything that you can get that's like a bready type issue, whether it's actual bread, loaf or bread rolls or croissants or muffins or anything like that, you can get gluten free these days. That's not to say those things are healthy, but I'm not really going to be talking about gluten today because that's an entirely different topic. As I said, anything that you can get that is a gluten or wheat product, there is a gluten-free alternative. They're usually made of things like corn flour, potato starch, uh, buckwheat flour, that kind of thing. These naturally gluten-free um, flours. So that's a separate topic. Today I'm just going to be talking about um, independent of gluten. Um, just some alternatives if you're trying to cut down on your bread intake. Now, why would you want to do that? Um, if you're trying to cut down on refined carbohydrates, then bread is a refined carbohydrate. And believe it or not, there's not a massive amount of difference between white bread and brown bread, wholemeal bread and granary. There is a little bit. Obviously, in your whole meals, you've got more of the whole grain in it. And especially in granary, you've actually got the whole seeds in there, the crunchy seeds as well. So they are marginally better, but there's not a massive, massive amount of difference in the way your body processes things. There are slightly more nutrients, slightly more fibre, but it, it's not as simple as comparing just white to whole milk. Because, for example, if you were to buy a very processed, pre-sliced, Chorley would pro, uh, made a uh, whole meal loaf, um, that isn't necessarily any better than, say, a freshly baked, um, traditionally baked and raised loaf bought from a butcher, a uh, butcher, well, baker, sorry, that um, is made properly from whole ingredients, but is a white bread. So that's a completely fresh, homemade style loaf there, that even though it's white bread, is probably going to be nutritionally better than a shop-bought uh, Chorley would made um, fast baked processed wholemeal loaf. Um, so it's not as simple as just saying wholemeal is better. So, what are some alternatives? Well, uh, rye bread is pretty good. Rye bread is lower GI and high fibre, so it's slower to digest. It's very filling and it's very nutrient rich. You can get ones with all sorts of things like added seeds as well. And it's really, really tasty. Now, it's no lower in calorie than regular bread, um, but it is very nutritious. Um, it tends to be, as the name sounds, it's made with rye rather than wheat, although brands vary and you can get ones that are wheat free or a mix of both. Um, so basically check the labels, but rye bread is slow to digest, it is tasty, it's an acquired taste, it doesn't taste the same as regular bread, but that is one alternative and you'd have slightly less of that, maybe one slice as an open sandwich instead of two pieces of bread. You know, we've got things like oat cakes, oat cakes I love to have in a house because they are uh, long, they're long life, they don't uh, go stale very quickly unlike bread and they're just useful if I've um, to put in kids lunch boxes, a quick snack, you can top them with hummus um, and again because they tend to be smaller, if you're trying to reduce your overall intake it's easier just to have one or two small oat cakes than like chopping slices of bread in half which is a little bit impractical sometimes and just feels a bit silly so oat cakes are really good um, some people like wheat crackers but because wheat crackers are like bread they're, they're still made of processed wheat flour so unless you're doing it just because you like the taste of them they're nutritionally not that different from bread at the end of the day they are a processed wheat flour product um, they do have a longer shelf life obviously but apart from that nutritionally there's not a lot of difference in terms of fiber vitamins um, and nutrition in them and i'm not a fan nutritionally of of those they're not you know evil they're not the end of the world but they're not the most nutrient dense food either and that's what we've got here sourdough sourdough is um it is like regular baked bread but a lot of people find it a lot easier to digest. It's had this fermented mixture added to it uh, before baking and it's been allowed to ferment and that's why it gives it kind of, literally is like a slightly sour taste. Um, and it is a slightly acquired taste, but a lot of people find that it's a lot easier to digest than regular wheat bread. Again, it's no lower in calorie, it's no lower in starch or carbs, 
but um, if you're finding that bread makes you bloated and that's your reason and it's not a full-on gluten intolerance where you have to cut out all gluten, um, you might find just having smaller amounts of sourdough bread rather than more wheat bread, or rather regular wheat bread, because sourdough bread still has wheat in it, um, might be um, a, easier to digest for you. Um, okay, you can go completely bread free and there are things that you can actually do um, instead of bread or wheat wraps. For example, you can get large lettuce leaves, fill them with a filling, a bit like you, kind of a salad filling or um, or like the stuff that you put in a sandwich, whether it's egg mayo, whether it's some chopped up ham, leftover chicken, whatever it is and roll those up, I think those are really yummy and quite useful for on the go, you can wrap them up in cling film instead of a wrap. Um, you can wrap up fillings with slices of courgette, if you get a wide peeler, create thick strips of courgette and you can wrap up things like um, strips of chicken or strips of ham into those um, or other, other meats, it tends to be things that are a bit bigger like a whole strips of of smoked salmon, for example, rather than tuna, which just kind of gets everywhere. Um, so those you can use to roll up fillings as well. Um, that's kind of all I've got on my list at the moment. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, the, my main reason for advising people to cut back a little bit on bread is not that bread's evil, unless you have celiac disease, obviously you can't have gluten, um, but it's just not, uh, the most nutritious food out there. Um, I, again, people tolerate different amounts of carbohydrates, so it's not necessarily about cutting back on carbs either. Sometimes it's about just opting for more nutritious types of carbs. So rather than having a sandwich, you'd have a jacket potato or a sweet potato with a filling. Rather than having pasta, you might have uh, rice or cauliflower rice and, and courgette are even better when you're on a weight loss uh, plan because they're so low in calorie and they're very nutrient dense, another way of getting vegetables in. Um, oat cakes, oats are very high in fibre, they're really good for you um, in every way. Um, porridge, when, you, um, when, you don't, when you're adding some extra protein to your porridge, whether it's protein powder, mix an egg in, all sorts of ways. So it's, it's not that uh, bread is really bad for your evil. It's just that I think today people eat so much bread and wheat products. They go for toast in the morning, um, a cereal bar at um, mid-morning, sandwich at lunch, a muffin or another cereal bar in the afternoon, pasta in the evening, and it's just wheat, 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 wheat all day long. So unless you have a problem with gluten, it's, um, it's nothing wrong with wheat, but it's just all day, every day. So I hope that's given you some good ideas there. And if you've got any questions or you've got any ideas of your own, please do comment below. I'd love to hear them as well. Thanks very much. I hope that was helpful. It's polly from fitmomformula.com.